Kia ora koutou. We're not allowed microphones, so you might want to shuffle forward as far as you can. Don't be shy. Let's pray. Koti Kiraiti, Te Poheranga Waka, Whakapainga Te Atua Ko Tato Kaihanga, Whakapainga Te Atua Ko Tato Kaiturima, Whakapainga Te Atua Ko Tato Kaihanga Ki Tau Au Whanui. Kia ora koutou and welcome to this Easter service, brought to you by the Combined Christian Clubs on campus, wonderful Christian staff, UC Chaplaincy, our guest musicians, and the Shekinah Trust. Did I miss anybody? <laughs> no one's screaming at me, that's good. For thousands of years, Christians have celebrated the death and resurrection of Jesus, and for the last 150 years, we've done it here at UC, in partnership with people of Christian faith. And that partnership is deep in our kaupapa. So we're going to pray, we'll give thanks to God, and we'll ask Him to bless UC, all the staff and the students, with peace and with resurrection life. We have done this for 150 years, and this year we're doing it again. Kia koa, kia haru, ko te karai te te aranga, te tāroi o te viri. Rejoice and be glad. For well, Christ is resurrection, reconciliation for all the human race. We shall all be one in Christ, one in our life together. Praise to God who has created us. Praise to God who has accepted us. Praise to God who renews our life in this world. Amen. Hi, my name is Mark. If you haven't got an outline, uh, if you could share them with each other. Uh, there's some new people coming, so uh, there's one between two. I did print 50, there's not 50. You know, I'm not sure where the other's gone, but, <laughs> um, but, but, but feel free to share, particularly if people come into the back. Uh, as we begin, uh, let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to remember the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus, here on campus as we approach Easter. We thank you for your very great love for us, that even though we so often neglect you or we don't honour you in our lives, you still love us and pursue us. We thank you that Jesus laid down his life for us to take the penalty that we rightly deserved and rose again to new life, conquering death and offering us life with you forever for those who trust in Jesus as our Saviour. We also have much to thank you for in the long history of this university. For the last 150 years that students and staff have been able to explore, examine and grow in our understanding of your amazing world. We thank you for the long-standing partnership between this university and Christian staff and students who have together enabled the endeavours of this place to flourish. We pray that you will continue to show favour upon us as we seek to live at peace with one another as students and staff together to learn more about your world and our place in it. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You 
you can move a little bit closer if you want. Jesus asked, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come for him. Am I leading in a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts and you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some of them had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I do not know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. 
Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. This is the Lord's word.
Jesus, hey. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness. Over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is light. Break every stronghold, break every stronghold, shine through. Sing it one more time. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a I'm now going to read for us from Luke 22, which is also in your handouts. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe me, and if I ask you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You say that I am. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and he said to them, You brought me this man as one who is inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod for he has sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection of the city and murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he spoke to them. Why? What crime has this man committed? 
I have found in him no ground for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will.
bow our heads in prayers. Let's pray. Our Father, you see us here on this beautiful day in 2023. We express our thanks and give praise to you, O Lord, our God. We look at this place, our beautiful campus, staff and students, and stand amazed for what you have done for this uni and through our people. You surely have blessed and used us to impact generations upon generations, the city of Christ Church in the region of Canterbury, but also out here in New Zealand and beyond our borders. Our minds and hearts will never fathom the work of your hands and the tremendous blessings you have done through this university. We acknowledge your goodness and your loving kindness, your guidance and protection, your comfort in times of trouble and equipping in the power and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. In the resurrection power of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I ask you to bless this campus and everything in it. Glorify yourself here today and days to come. Lord, hear our prayers for well-being and healing, for guidance and directions, for protection and financial security. Bless us with creativity for teaching and research. Correct us where correction is needed, where there's separation and broken relationships. Restore and bring us together again and open our eyes for what's next. In your name, Jesus, I bless you, see our authorities, chancellor and vice chancellor, CLT members, head of schools and head of departments and head of service units. Blessings to our staff and students and their families, as well as our visitors and UC partners. May the world know that the University of Canterbury is a place where top quality degrees and cutting edge research go hand in hand with goodness and kindness and respect for one another. May we receive your abundant blessings to also give out and to bless others. May you always preserve a holy remnant in this place. And may you continue to speak through your prophets and God-fearing people on campus to fulfill your plans for you see in times to come. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'll be continuing to read from Luke 23, that's in your handout. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him, and made, and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the, other, along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching. And the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There's a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us! But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. 
But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into the kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what had taken place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their position and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb out in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The woman who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the command.
entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others who were with them who told them to the apostles, told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman because their words seemed like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. He went away, wondering to himself what had happened.
<coughs> I'll say the closing prayer in a minute, but first of all, I ask you to join me in thanking Diana for her wonderful music. <laughs> Mark Santich, our uh, directing mind. Mark, your faithfulness is still legendary. And Samuel and Victoria from the Shekinah Trust, who have pushed through the ability to have this event. Thank you very much. There are hot cross buns afterwards. My Auntie Nolan has contributed Easter cake and Easter eggs and she commands that you eat them, and she's 103. <laughs> Let us pray. Etiariki o te gloria o te oranga, glorious Lord of life. We praise you that by the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have delivered us from sin and death, and made all your creation new. Make us new too, as we celebrate with joy. Let the sun of your righteousness rise onto campus, that we may be raised from the death of sin to the life of righteousness. For our God lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter to you, lovely people. God bless you.